Hello everyone, I am Vibhor Singh and today we will be discussing the 7th problem of the CP31 sheet under the 1300 rated problems. So as you can see this is the CP31 sheet and this is 7th problem, Rudolph and Snowflakes. So opening the problem. One winter morning, Rudolph was looking thoroughly out of the window, thoughtfully out of the window, watching the following slow flakes. He quickly noticed a certain symmetry in the configuration of the snowflakes. And like a true mathematician, Rudolph came up with a mathematical model of a snowflake. He defined a snowflake as an undirected graph constructed according to the following rules. Initially, the graph has only one vertex, then more vertices are added to the graph. The initial vertex is connected by k edges to the initial vertex is connected by a k edges to new vertices. Each vertex that is connected to only one vertex is connected by edges to k new vertices. This step should be done at least once. Okay, so this is what the problem states. So let's try to understand what the problem is saying. Basically, there'll be a k greater than one. Okay. So for any k greater than 1, we'll have a snow, we can form a snowflake. So initially there will be only one vertex. Then let's say k is equal to 3. Okay. So at first there will be 3 nodes connecting from this one vertex. Okay. Now after that what does it say? It says that each vertex that is connected to only one other vertex is connected by edges to k new more vertices. So what does this mean is every leaf vertex that is this, this, and this okay every leaf vertex let's change the color every leaf vertex will be connected to k more vertices in the next step okay this is what is happening in the second step and the problem also states that this step should happen at least once that means for k is equal to 3 this is the smallest i can have this is the smallest snowflake i have which has 1, 2, 3, 4, 4 vertices in the middle and then 9 more outside. So that makes it 13 vertices in total, right? 3 plus 3 plus 3, 9 plus 3, 12 plus 1, 13. So it has 13 vertices for k is equal to 3 and this is the smallest snowflake I can form for k is equal to 3. In the next step, again from these 9, I will again form 3, 3 more vertices. And the total number would be 13 plus 27 which would be 40, something like that. Okay. So you can try to draw it up and understand how the snowflake is forming. Now they have showed a possible configuration for k is equal to 4. So initially there is one vertex to which 4 are connected. Then for each 4 of them, 4 more vertices are connected. Now after some mathematical research, Rudolf realized that such snowflakes may not have any number of vertices. Help Rudolf check if snowflake with n vertices can exist. Okay, so we just need to find whether a snowflake with a particular number n exists or not. Okay, a particular number of indices, uh, vertices. So n is given till 10 raised to 6. Okay, so let's discuss the expected time complexity of this problem. So 1 second in code forces allows us 10 raised to 8 operations, right? And our n is given to us till 10 raised to 6. So anything of the order of order of n or order of n log n even will work but if we go even to like something like square root of n square root of n even this should not work or even n square this these complexities will not work so this is the line that we can draw and these complexities will not work so we need to limit our solution to something like n or n log n right that is in the problem and also t is given till 10 raised to 4 in the problem and there is no check on the sum of n so you can also consider like there is a like you can have order of t plus n as well, something like that, or t plus n log n. But something like o into t of n, uh, oh sorry, t into n, o, in, o of t into n, this would not work, right? So we have to come with something like, maybe we can look to pre-compute something since we are not given a uh, constraint on sum summation of n for this problem. Okay. So, now the problem states that there are only some certain values, right? What they have said is there are only some certain values that a snowflake can have, like the number of vertices a snowflake can have. So the idea to this problem is, as we can see, there is no some, uh, constraint or summation of n either. 
हाउ अबाउट वी ट्राई टू प्री कंप्यूट प्री कंप्यूट ऑल पॉसिबल वैल्यूज वैल्यूज टिल टेन रेस टू सिक्स ओके लेट्स ट्राई टू सी इफ वी कैन डू दिस ओके सो our case type should be greater than 1 so minimum k should be 2 right now for any given k for any given k how can i calculate the number of number of vertices in a k array tree or k array tree right something like that basically this is a very standard problem or a standard solution that you would have that the total number of vertices if there are x or if the tree is of depth x so there are k nodes in the first layer then in the second layer there will be k square nodes right each of these nodes will have another k nodes so in the first layer we have one then in the second layer we have k so the third layer we have k square nodes so on and so forth this is how our tree would be formed so the summation of these values is a simple gp that we can see which is k is to x if x is the total depth of the tree minus 1 upon k minus 1 this is the formula we have for the total number of vertices in a k array tree of of depth x right it is very simply we can see it forms a simple summation of gp which gives us this formula and it's a very standard formula so using this formula for in o of 1 i can calculate for each of my k i can try to calculate For a given k and x, what will be the number of vertices in that tree? Now, our idea is to pre-compute all values, right? Our idea is to pre-compute all values. So what I'll do is I will say I'll first choose a k. Let's say I'll start k from two, then three, and so on and so forth. Then for each k, I will calculate what possible values of k array trees are less than ten raised to six. How will I do that? I will say that. First x is equal to three. Initially, x has to be three minimum, right? As we saw in the problem, minim the third step has to be performed at least once. That means minimum depth of the tree will always be three. So x has to start from three. Okay, then x will go to four, five, six, so on and so forth. And I will just update that for three, whatever the value I'm getting. For four, whatever the value I'm getting, I'll just maintain that this value is possible. I'll maintain a vector of is possible, right? but now you might think am i not running just two loops that is on a value of k and on a value of x right yes i am running two loops so won't this complexity go much more than what we want won't this go something like t into n square or something like t into n square or something like that won't this go like that so the idea is to understand that it will never go to this complexity why let's look at a formula okay a formula goes of the order of k is to x minus one upon k minus one, right? So we can agree that in this formula, the values increase exponentially, right? The values increase exponentially. So I have to look at only values less than ten raised to six, right? I have to check for x. For each k, I will run my x only till this entire value is ten raised less than ten raised to six. So the order of running this entire second loop of x should be of the order of log n, right? I'll repeat this part. Since we are doing k raised to x minus one upon k minus one, basically this will increase in an exponential manner. As x will increase, the entire function will increase exponentially because there is a k raised to x factor, and I need to check possible values only till ten raised to six. This should be less than equal to. So we, I need to check values only till ten raised to six. So as soon as this value of my formula goes greater than ten raised to six, I can see I will end the loop of the x or of increasing the x. So from there I get the idea that overall complexity of running x or the number of time x will run would be of the order of log n to the base k, something like that, right? On around this order. So. from here we'll get that overall complexity will just become if we take a average complexity of log n we will have a, a average we'll have overall complexity of t plus n log n 
right? It will be t plus n log n since we'll be pre-computing all values. And then for each test case, we'll use our pre-computed array. Okay. So let's try to understand this with the help of, a co uh, of the code of the problem. So this is the code of the problem. Initially, we are taking t as the input and then we are pre-computing results for all possible values till 10 raised to 6. How are we doing that? We created an is possible value and initially all values are 0 since we were signifying false over here. Now I am running the loop i is equal to 2, i less than equal to 10 raised to 4 I have done here, right? Now, you're, now you might think why, have I, why am I running the loop only till 10 raised to 4 and not running till 10 raised to 6, right? That is because, see, minimum excess x minimum value would be 3, right? So our smallest value would be k raised to 3 minus 1 upon k minus 1, right? This value should be less than equal to 10 raised to 6. Only till then we are looking at the values, right? So this, I can say this value is of the order of k raised to 2, right? This is almost of the order of k raised to 2. So when I get this, I'll get that k raised to 2 should be less than equal to 10 raised to 6. So I can get a soft margin of k that it would be less than equal to 10 raised to 3, somewhere around that. Maybe this is a very soft margin. So for a safer end, I have run a loop till 10 raised to 4 to not increase the complexity too much, right? That is why I have run i till 10 raised to 4. Then first I'm uh, calculating a current that is basically i represents k over here, right? So I'm first doing k cube, right? And then I'm doing k cube minus 1 upon i minus 1, which is the first formula, right? This is the smallest value. Then while my this new value that I have created is less than 10 raised to 6, I'm doing is possible of this value should be 1. I'm increasing my current, which is like currently it has k raised to 3, then it will become k raised to 4. And then I'll just update the formula, k raised, uh, update the current one or the uh, possible value of the snowflake as current minus 1 upon i minus 1, which will be like k raised to 4 minus 1, then k raised to 5 minus 1 upon i minus 1, which will give us the actual value of what will be the total number of vertices in the snowflake. So this is how we generated the is current or is possible vector. And make sure to take long long int. I have taken i as well as a long long int. Since I'm multiplying it, I'm taking i cube in current. That's why I'm taking i as also, also as long long int. So make sure to take the variables as long long int to not face any problems. And then uh, finally, while t minus minus, that is for each test case, we are taking n as an input. If n is possible, we are printing yes, else we are printing no, right? So it's a very straightforward solution. If you look at the overall time, space and time complexity of the solution. So for the time complexity, we are running this loop till 1000, right? Oh, sorry, uh, 10,000 till 10 raised to 4, right? And then as we discussed, this while loop, inner while loop will be of the order of log of n, right? So I can write this as a soft margin of 10 raised to 4 into log of n, right? So, oh, and then, so like this would run in the order of 10 raised to 4. And this would run in the order of uh, log of n. So overall, I can say that, and then this will also run in uh, order of t. So let's not miss this, right? So overall time complexity, I can say is t plus 10 raised to 4 into log n. Okay, something like this. This will be my time complexity. Let's just separate them out. Yeah. And space complexity. So I have created a vector of 10 raised to 6 size. So overall space complexity will be 10 raised to 6, which we can say is of the order of n only, right? Since n is still 10 raised to 6, we can say it's of the order of n. That is my overall space complexity. Or it's going to be of, we can hard, we can take a hard value 10 raised to 6, but that's not required. We can just write it as n. So I hope you are able to understand the solution to the problem. It is a very niche idea that we'll just try to pre-compute all the values and then we can just get that the pre-computation will run in an order of n log n or less than that in fact. So that is why we are able to do this, solve this problem. Thank you.